Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel for part 5 of our G1000 series. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we get into the video, I just have one disclaimer. I am not a pilot, so I will not be going over any procedures throughout the duration of this series. The aim of this series is to help you understand the G1000 and all of its features. In today's video, we will take a look at the G1000 autopilot panel at the very top of the PFD. We will not be taking to the air in this video, so that will limit us on a couple features. If you have any comments or questions throughout today's video, post it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tickle on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. If you missed the previous episodes, links will also be down in the description, or you can click up here for the playlist. All right, so taking a look at the PFD of the G1000, we're going to be focusing on the autopilot enunciators at the very top. You will also notice that we have all of our autopilot options on the left hand side of the G1000. Depending on the aircraft you're flying, you may not have the autopilot buttons on the G1000 itself. They may be located on a center console, such as in the SR22. That being said, all of the buttons will operate the same no matter if they're on console or on the G1000 themselves. The first button on the top left is the Autopilot Master, and once we tick on that, a couple things are going to populate in the Autopilot panel. On the left hand side, you will see ROL, and that is in Roll Mode. So what that does is it keeps the plane level in flight, but does not maintain your pitch. To the right of that will be the AP that will let us know that our autopilot master is on. If we turn the autopilot off, you will see it will be highlighted in yellow. To the right of autopilot is PIT. This is our pitch hold. This will maintain whatever pitch you entered autopilot in. The next button we'll take a look at is heading. If you press on the heading button, you will see HDG light up in green. That means that heading is selected and it is active. So that means the autopilot will follow whatever heading you have entered here below. If you wish to enter back into roll mode, you can just press the heading button one more time. You will also see the flight director here in pink levels itself back out again. Below heading, we have the nav button. And this is what we're going to use to enter either a GPS hold or a localizer hold. If we are in GPS mode on our HSI and press the nav button, if we take a look at the autopilot panel now, you will see that GPS has been enabled once we hit the nav button. Now one thing that you'll notice here is GPS is highlighted in white and roll is still in green. What that means is the autopilot is currently active in a roll hold mode and it is not active in GPS hold mode. So now you may ask, well, how do I activate GPS hold and not roll mode? To do that, you would either need to turn the aircraft towards your GPS line, which you can see we are just off center of, or you can enter heading hold mode and now you will see heading hold is enabled and active. So the autopilot will now follow your heading bug and we can direct the aircraft towards our flight plan course. As we get closer to our flight plan course, our GPS will then activate and will then light up in green, letting us know that our GPS is now active and the autopilot is now following our GPS course. At the same time, the heading will then drop off of the autopilot panel. Now, if you're following a localizer or a VOR, it will look a little bit different. So if I go down and press on the CDI soft key and switch to localizer one or VOR one, in nav one, I have already programmed the localizer for the airport in which we're sitting at. Now, if we go ahead and press the nav button on the left hand side, you will see localizer populate in the autopilot panel, letting us know that we are now going to be locking on to a localizer. 
As before, because we are not close enough to the localizer course, it will not activate for our autopilot. Once you do get close enough to the localizer course and the autopilot locks on, localizer will then switch from white to green, letting us know that we are now active for the autopilot in localizer hold, and the roll or heading will then drop off. The next button down on the left hand side is the approach button. This is what we're going to activate once we are just about to our final approach fix and we are going to capture the glide slope. This feature I'm not going to be able to show you here because we are sitting on the ground, but when we do press the approach button, you will see a GS will light up in the autopilot panel. Below the approach button is vertical speed. We will use the vertical speed to adjust how fast we are either going to ascend or descend the aircraft by feet per minute. To use vertical speed, we're going to first set our altitude in the altitude bug. Once we have that set, we can then activate vertical speed. Once vertical speed is active, you will see VS populate in the autopilot panel in green, letting us know that it is enabled and active. To the right hand side, you will see zero feet per minute. This is where we will set our vertical speed for our ascent or descent. To adjust that, we will press either the nose up or nose down button, and as you press up, our vertical speed will increase, and also an arrow pointing in the direction that the plane will be traveling. On the right hand side, vertical speed will also populate in our vertical speed tape. To the right of vertical speed, ALTS will also be highlighted in white. That lets us know that our altitude hold will now be following the selected altitude depicted in our altitude bug. As shown here, we're at 6,000 feet. Once we achieve 6,000 feet, ALTS will then highlight in green and vertical speed will drop off. Below vertical speed, we have our flight level change. When you press on the flight level change, this will now populate FLC in our autopilot panel, as well as a set speed to the right hand side. Flight level change will allow us to ascend or descend the aircraft at a set airspeed. The rate of ascent or descent would now depend on the amount of throttle input that we give the aircraft. For instance, if you are in a climb and you have your flight level change set to 100 knots, if you are at full throttle, you may be able to achieve 1,000 feet per minute at 100 knots. As you decrease throttle, the aircraft will now have to pitch down to maintain that 100 knots, thus decreasing your climb rate. To adjust our speed for our flight level change, we will then again use the nose up or nose down button. In this case, we're going to use the nose down button to increase our speed. Now, what speed should you set this for when you are ascending? And that's going to be different for every aircraft. Usually, I would set my initial flight level change speed to my Y VREF over here on the left. As you do get higher in the atmosphere, you would have to increase the flight level change speed so that your plane doesn't fall out of the sky. On the top right of our autopilot buttons here, we have our FD, and that stands for our flight director. The flight director is used to help guide you depending on the settings that you have programmed in the G1000. For instance, it will help you keep on track for your ascent. It will also help keep you on track when you are using heading mode, or nav hold mode by use of a visual cue letting you know how you need to pitch or turn the aircraft. Below the flight director button we have altitude hold. If we press altitude hold button that will then set altitude hold for our current altitude and then our current altitude will be shown in the autopilot panel here at the top. Below altitude hold we have our VNAV button. This is going to be used to activate VNAV in either our ascent or descent. Below the VNAV is our back course button. So what is back course and when would you use it? What this will allow us to do is to fly an ILS in reverse. If we jump over here to the MFD, if we take a look at the runway in which we're on, normally ILS frequencies are going to shoot in one direction. 
So let's say that the ILS frequency is shooting to the north, and I am going to be approaching from the south. Now, because we're coming in from the south, which is going to be the opposite direction in which the ILS is pointing, we need a way in which we can flip the ILS around so that we can use it on the opposite end of the runway. And that's when the back course button comes into play. If you flick on the back course button, that will essentially flip the ILS for you, and we can now use the same ILS frequency coming from the opposite direction. When we press the back course button, you will then see back course light up in green at the very top to let us know that it is enabled and it is active in our autopilot. All right, so that's it for today, folks. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.